These profound truths have been concealed from humanity for centuries, but today, you will learn about the authentic law of attraction and how to apply it in your life. While many may be familiar with the New Age variations of this law, what you will hear now differs significantly. In the New Age movement, people have various beliefs about the law of attraction, but what you will hear today are the genuine principles. As human beings, we often express our desire for certain things in life, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity. We aspire to happiness, health, peace, prosperity, freedom, and more. Although we may express a desire for these things, there are certain requirements for obtaining them, which are grounded in nature. These requirements must be met to attain the conditions that we seek. If you desire change from the default conditions, specific requirements exist that must be met. New Age teachers may deny or not disclose this fact, but it is necessary for creating genuine change. In order to obtain the conditions we desire, human beings must fulfill specific requirements. We cannot expect the desired conditions to magically manifest on their own without meeting the necessary requirements. This is an essential concept to comprehend. We must acquire certain knowledge that will spur us into action. Unfortunately, this knowledge has been occulted, or hidden from humanity, and is held by only a few at the top of the knowledge pyramid. The word occult is derived from the Latin adjective occultus, meaning hidden from sight. The knowledge of natural law is an example of occulted knowledge. It has been hidden from humanity for centuries and only accessible to a select few. Imagine a pyramid representing knowledge or ignorance, with knowledge at the top. The higher you go in the pyramid, the more knowledge you acquire. The pyramid tapers at the top because very few individuals possess this hidden knowledge. Those at the bottom of the pyramid, the ignorant masses, have no knowledge of it. This knowledge is known as occulted knowledge and can be divided into two general bodies, the arcana. The term arcana is derived from the Latin language and it pertains to knowledge of individual units of consciousness or the human psyche. The first body of occult knowledge deals with the human psyche, including how it operates and what motivates us. The second body of occult knowledge, known as the greater or major arcana, involves natural laws that are unseen but universally applicable to intelligent beings capable of understanding them. In various traditions, these natural laws are referred to as karmic, moral, or God's law. This knowledge has been concealed to create and maintain a power differential. Those in possession of this knowledge have an understanding of how human consciousness, motivation, and perception function, as well as how human beings can be manipulated. All the distractions, such as news, video games, and television, are intended to keep people from learning this truth and to maintain the power differential. The distractions prevent us from understanding the truth about human perception versus reality. Their ability to perceive reality is what I refer to as consciousness. If someone's consciousness is high, meaning it's at a high frequency, they're more likely to recognize patterns and understand the truth. On the other hand, if their consciousness is low, they'll have a harder time recognizing the patterns, and their perception of the truth will be limited. As the frequency of our consciousness increases, our perception of reality becomes more aligned with the truth, and we can recognize patterns more easily. If the frequency of our consciousness were to become infinitely high, our perception of reality would be indistinguishable from the truth itself. This can be compared to sound waves, when the frequency is low, we hear a low bass tone, 
but as the frequency increases, it eventually goes beyond the range of human hearing. The quality of perception is crucial to understand because perception is not reality, it is simply the filter through which we see reality. At the bottom of the brain is the reptilian brain, consisting of the brainstem and cerebellum. Together, these two components make up the R complex, the lowest consciousness part of the brain responsible for reflexive actions in response to stimuli. The middle part of the brain comprises various glands like the hypothalamus and thalamus. In contrast, the midbrain, or the limbic system, is responsible for facilitating all human emotions. The outer casing of the telencephalon is the neocortex, which is the higher brain. The telencephalon or the hemispheres of the brain are bilaterally symmetrical and generally control different functions of thought. The left hemisphere governs logic, analytical and mathematical thinking, and linear thought processes, while the right hemisphere facilitates creativity, emotional dynamics, and holistic thought. When the left side of the brain becomes chronically dominant, symbolized by an upward-pointing triangle or blade, it represents the masculine part of the brain. The downward-pointing triangle, known as the chalice or cup, is another ancient symbol representing the feminine part of the brain. To develop real consciousness and pattern recognition, and to achieve morality and ethical balance, it is essential to maintain a balance between these two. When we talk about intelligence, people often equate it with intellect, particularly in Western societies. However, intelligence encompasses more than intellect alone. Intelligence involves a holistic understanding that includes both the left brain's logical thinking and the right brain's nurturing, compassionate, creative, and intuitive aspects of consciousness. The word intelligence itself reflects this idea. Intel comes from intellect, but gens comes from the Latin verb generate, which means to generate or to create. In other words, intelligence is the creative aspect of our personality and the right brain. True intelligence involves a balance between intellect and creativity, logical thinking and nurturing, and compassion. Unfortunately, most people in our society are not in a state of holistic intelligence. They tend to be imbalanced in one form of brain dominance or the other. If the left hemisphere of the brain becomes chronically dominant, the reptilian brain will take over the executive function of the brain. As a result, the individual will become ruled by selfishness and base desires. Such individuals may develop a personality that is based on domination and control. Conversely, if the right hemisphere of the brain becomes chronically dominant, the limbic system will take over the executive function of the brain and the person will become ruled by their emotions. Such individuals may develop a personality that is based on submissiveness and naivete. The general principles of natural law guide true intelligence and balance between the two hemispheres of the brain. Natural law is a set of principles that underlie the universe and govern all that occurs within it. There are seven fundamental principles of natural law, but there is also an eighth principle that is often overlooked. This hidden principle is what binds all the other seven principles together. These principles together form a master key that unlocks universal wisdom, including the knowledge of how to obtain what we desire. The seven general principles of natural law are mentalism correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. The principle of mentalism states that everything in creation is a manifestation of mind. The principle of correspondence states that what is above is like that which is below, and vice versa. 
The principle of vibration states that everything vibrates and is ultimately pure vibratory energy manifesting in different forms and frequencies. The principle of polarity asserts that everything has a dual nature and pairs of opposites. The principle of rhythm explains that everything has a natural flow and tendency to rise and fall, and everything has a swing or rhythm to it. The principle of cause and effect asserts that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. When we understand and live by these principles, we gain a deep understanding of the workings of the universe and can better align ourselves with its natural flow. Every event that occurs happens according to law, and chance is just a label for a law that hasn't been recognized. There are numerous planes of causation, but no event is exempt from the law. You cannot change the past, but you can alter what you do from this point on to ensure that the future is different. Currently, what exists is the truth, and you can either accept or reject it. The final principle of the seven principles of natural law is gender, which exists in everything, with each component or principle possessing its own masculine and feminine aspects. We've already seen how gender appears on all planes of existence, from the spiritual to the mental and physical. Now, let's discuss the eighth principle of natural law, which I refer to as the lost principle. It is the principle that binds all of the other principles together, the container that neatly accommodates all the other principles. Unfortunately, it's lost because we're not exercising it. The seven principles of natural law are represented by seven overlapping circles. The eighth circle, the seed of life, represents the lost principle. The eighth principle is known as the generative principle, the factor that generates the desired result. It's the causal force that creates something from a seed. The generative principle is care, not love or compassion. Care refers to what you're focusing on, what you're giving attention to and helping grow. This doesn't imply ignorance of negative events, but awareness of what you're feeding. If you choose to feed ignorance, it will grow. The generative principle is the opposite of what new agers want you to believe. Every event that occurs in our world is governed by natural laws, and chance is simply a name for an unrecognized law. Although there are multiple planes of causation, no phenomenon can escape these laws. While we cannot change the past, we can take action in the present and shape our future accordingly. It's up to us to either accept or reject this truth. As we've discussed, gender is an inherent part of everything, every entity has both masculine and feminine principles. This applies to all levels of existence, including the spiritual, mental, and physical realms. It's not enough to be ignorant of what's happening in the world or only focus on the positive. By ignoring the negative, we actually fuel it and ensure that it continues to occur. Care is what generates our collective experience, and if we don't care about what's happening, it's impossible to change the direction of energy and consciousness. The lost principle, the dynamic of care, is the driving force of our thoughts and actions. Lost principle, the generative principle of care, is the driving force of our thoughts and actions and ultimately generates the quality of our shared experience here on earth. By developing our heart, mind, and guts in that order, we can align our thoughts, emotions, and actions and achieve unity consciousness, where there is no contradiction between them. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Don't forget to share this video with people who may find it helpful, and leave a comment below with your thoughts and questions. Together, 
Let's work towards a world where care is the generative principle and positive change is the norm. Thank you for watching.